welcome to our October green drinks. Everyone joining us. So I am Ginevra and I am the program director at Sustainable Woodstock. We're a nonprofit founded in 2009 and we focus on um, environmental action and education, building on Woodstock's legacy as a birthplace of the modern conservation movement. Our vision promotes vibrant, inclusive, thriving communities where we live sustainably now and in the future. So you've come to one of our monthly Green Drinks events. These are um, kind of fun, less formal events to connect people with similar interests. Uh, we invite local nonprofits, businesses, and individuals to make short presentations that highlight local initiatives and sustainability initiatives in our area and more broadly sometimes. And they're just great um, educational opportunities. So I'm actually gonna use this venue to plug next month's green drinks. It's going to be on November 17th and will be on supporting zero waste in Vermont. It will be hosted by Ben Kogan, who's the founder of Reusable Solutions, an outreach organization focused on eradicating single-use plastic and transitioning to a circular economy. So that's November 17th, and it'll be virtual. So I'll send out the info when I um, email all you folks after this presentation. I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jessica with Window Dressers. Jessica is the executive director of Window Dressers. She brings an enthusiasm for the mission and goals of the organization, born of her three years as a volunteer, local coordinator for community builds in South Portland, Maine, and as a previous program manager for Vermont and New Hampshire. Jessica is thrilled to now be working to help warm homes, reduce carbon emissions, and build community beyond Maine's borders. So thrilled that you could join us, Jessica, um, and looking forward to hearing from you. Take it away. Thank you, Ginevra, and thank you to Sustainable Woodstock for having window dressers um, this evening. Um, and hello to all you people out there. Thanks for coming. Um, I have a little slideshow that I'm going to share as I just talk through, um, just talk a little bit about our program, sort of how inserts work and what the benefits are. Um, so I am going to, oops. So can everybody see my screen? Looks good to me. All right, great. So thank you again, Ginevra and Sustainable Woodstock for all the work you're doing in Vermont um, to, uh, to make our world a better place. Um, so window dressers, just to give you a little bit of an overview of our mission. So window dressers, brings community volunteers of all economic and social situations together to improve the warmth and comfort of interior spaces, so homes and other interior spaces, um, lower heating costs and reduce carbon dioxide pollution by redu producing low cost, effective, high quality insulating window inserts that function as custom interior mounted storm windows. Um, so we are a volunteer driven organization. Um, we work with, I would say about 1500 volunteers across Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and now Massachusetts to bring these inserts to members of our community that would benefit from some weatherization on their windows. Um, we as an organization are small staff. We have two uh, program managers, so one of whom is on the screen here, Steve McFarland, um, who's the program manager for Vermont and New Hampshire right now. Um, so we have a small staff that uh, supports community, uh, community organizations, groups of volunteers that come together to run and organize what we call community builds. So these are like old fashioned barn raisings for weatherization where everybody who's getting an insert is asked to come and contribute a little bit of their time to help build the inserts for the community. So we window dressers, the staff, we provide all of the supplies and the materials. We train the volunteers to do measuring, um, to do outreach, um, to do all of the things involved in, in running a community build. 
Um, so our inserts are available to anybody in the community. So um, people who can pay full price for them and also for people who are unable to afford them. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we're not just a program that's available to folks who are low income. It's available, our product is available to everybody. Um, so one of the things that's really important about what we do is that um, because our community builds are organized and run by volunteers, community groups, we can really only serve communities where, uh, where a community build team is able to form. So where volunteers are willing and able to step up and spend the time that they, um, uh, that it takes to run a community build. So we've had a lot of interest from communities that are outside of or too far from our community bills that unfortunately we haven't been able to serve, um, but we're always trying to work with new groups and new folks who are interested in the program to get a community build going. So as I said, our product is available to everybody and about 25 to 35% of our inserts go to low income households um, for free or for whatever they can afford to pay. So if somebody is struggling financially, um, is receiving any kind of public or state assistance or local assistance, they are eligible to get our, our inserts. We have a very sort of loose um, set of guidelines that, um, you know, around the eligibility for these free inserts. It's really about having a conversation with these people, seeing what their situation is, getting to know them a little bit, and then seeing what they're able to afford to pay, what, it, what they're able to afford to pay, um, and just making it work for everybody so that this, that this really effective weatherization um, project can be available to as many people as possible. And so these inserts, so the way that we're able to provide these free inserts is through a mix of local um, and state grant funding, um, just a variety of donations all make our work possible. So if you've donated to window dressers or are doing something like what Ginevra and Sustainable Woodstock are doing, um, thank you, thank you, you make our work possible. So, Let's talk about windows a little bit. So windows can be, and I think Ginevra is going to talk about this a little bit, but they can be really a really tricky aspect of weatherization um, because according to the Department of Energy, windows and doors are responsible for about 30% of heat loss in a building. Um, and they can be really expensive to replace or repair. So that's why our inserts are a really effective solution. So our inserts are constructed of a simple pine frame um, and wrapped in two layers of plastic. And so the two layers of plastic create an insulating airspace. And when placed in a window, um, you get an additional insulating airspace between the insert and the window. So it really reduces drafts, cuts down on condensation, street noise, um, so one example I really like to say is that in the winter, even if you have double pane windows that are relatively new or brand new, if you put your hand on the glass of the window on a cold day, it's gonna feel cold. And so that can result in um, convection, you know, heat loss via convection. So it can make it feel like there's a draft if you're sitting next to the window, even if there isn't leakage necessarily. So the insert really cuts down on that um, convective heat loss effect. Um, and if you put your insert, your hand on the insert when it's there, it's going to feel like room temperature on the surface. So that's just sort of proof of its effectiveness and how it works. So each insert is custom fit. We measure our, um, our teams of volunteer measures go out and measure every single window uh, to a hundredth of an inch. Uh, so we guarantee the fit. For, for each of your windows. They are removable and reusable. Um, if they're well cared for, they can last up to 10 years or maybe even more. Um, if the plastic on the inserts breaks, you can get it re-wrapped re is what we call it. So all of the plastic and all the tape is removed 
and it's rewrapped in the plastic. And so it's good as new and ready to be used again. So we, we will do that for a small fee of about $15. Um, so that's, that's just some of the great qualities of our inserts. And of course, they're fun to make at community builds. So one of the other aspects of our windows that I really like to talk about is uh, the low cost. So relative to replacing your windows or other similar products that are on the market, our inserts are very low cost um, at about $45 for an average size window. Um, and the way that we do this is because of our volunteer coordinated and run community builds. And also because everybody who gets the inserts is asked to participate. So all of that helps to keep our costs low, to make these affordable and accessible to as many people as possible. So we've, we've had some volunteers, members of our board that have done research over the years um, and we're getting more and more finely um, calculated details about the energy savings around our, our, our window inserts, but we've calculated that you probably save about a gallon of heating oil or equivalent for every square foot of window. So it's about, I think, 10 and a half gallons of, of heating fuel per average size insert per year. Um, so they generally pay for themselves in about two years or so. And again, there are a lot of variables involved um, when you're talking about weatherization and, and uh, the efficiency of a home. So how well insulated it is, the type of windows that are there, the heating system. So these are these are sort of general guidelines. Um, another great thing, um, if you're in Vermont and you're getting inserts, they are eligible for the efficiency main DIY rebate. rebate. Um, if you get at least three inserts, you get, and get a $100 rebate. This is just a little photo I like to show. So it's sort of a before and after inserts. And so we've had somebody take um, photos with an infrared camera. So the photo on the left shows the red, shows he lost through the windows and the doors. And on the right, the photo shows those windows uh, with inserts in place and the associated, um, it's there, you know, less heat is going from the inside of the house to the outside. And this is a photo of our beautiful inserts in place. They look really good, I think. Um, they're very simple, very clean looking. And we do offer an option of getting the inserts in white. Um, those with the white inserts are a little bit more expensive, but if you have white trim and you want it to match, there's that option. So one of the best parts about a community build is the community build. So community builds build community, I think. You know, it's about the people coming together, people in the community who might not otherwise come together for an event, you know, are working across the table together, they're laughing, they're having conversation, maybe finding things that they have in common. Um, I've seen a lot of examples of friendships being um, being made during a community build. So it's a really, um, it's a really inspiring, fun um, environment to be in. So I encourage you all to participate in a local build if you have the opportunity, um, see what it's all about. If you're interested in what the inserts look like, that's a great chance to get your hands on one and examine it. Um, so again, our customers, our participants, in the making of the inserts. And, you know, there are no special skills required. Some people will say to me, you know, well, I don't know how to build anything or I don't, you know, I don't, I've never done anything like that. And it's like, you know what? It's very, very simple. We have designed all of these special jigs to make each step in the assembly process really easy for anybody to do. Um, and there have been a lot of cases where I've seen people come in and they're like, well, I don't know how to do any, I don't know how to build or I don't know how to use tools. And they'll pick up a drill and they'll, we'll show them the steps and then get going. And they're very excited about it. And they leave the event feeling incredibly empowered 
um, that they've done something not only to help themselves, but to help their communities. So that's basically it. I'm going to stop there and uh, turn it back over to Ginevra. Um, I don't know if we want to answer questions now or if you wanted to talk a little bit more. Um, why don't I just give a quick overview of what's happening for us and then we'll do questions. And once again, folks, please feel free to um, enter questions as we go. Thank you. So, oh, I have a cat. Sorry. Um, Thank you so much, Jessica. That was so helpful as an overview, I think, um, that really, it's hard to kind of describe the whole process, but you've obviously done it a million times. So that was really helpful. Um, can everyone see the screen? Okay, excellent. My name's Ginevra. Um, I'm the program director at Sustainable Woodstock, and we're hosting a window dressers build this year in Woodstock, so I'm the coordinator for that build as well. This is just the info. If you wanna see what Jessica just described, I encourage you to come to our build as a volunteer. We start next week, yay, on Thursday, October 27th. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, it goes for a week. It's our first build, like I said, and we're gonna be making almost 240 window inserts for folks in the community. You can sign up to volunteer at this link that I've got here, um, or you can actually go to windowdressers.org to do the exact same thing. Um, and then you could see all the builds that are happening in Vermont and surrounding communities. Um, I'll send this link out afterwards. So don't feel like you have to like write it down right now. But if you go to it, can you see my Chrome window? No, you still see the presentation. I won't bother then. If you go to it, you can basically just see what slots are empty or filled in our build. And you can sign up to bring food. You can sign up to actually assemble and build the inserts. And you could even sign up as a greeter. So you would just greet people and help get them oriented. And that would be a good thing to do um, if you felt like you weren't sure you wanted to build yet or you wanted to just kind of dip your toe in the process. We'd love to have you. It's at the Unitarian Church North Chapel in Woodstock. Like I said, I'll follow up with an email. Um, and just so folks who are local know on this call, um, Woodstock is us, but we're also covering the towns of Pomfret, Barnard, Bridgewater, Plymouth, Reading. I don't think we have any Windsor folks this year, but that doesn't mean we wouldn't do that in the future. Um, we're not covering Heartland and Hartford because they have their own window dressers build actually happening for the first time this year. It's right after our build, so that would also be an excellent build to volunteer at. Um, and then just a note about our build in particular, Jessica said window inserts are for everyone, and they are. The Woodstock build is focusing on inserts for income sensitive folks. Um, I put these guidelines as just a rough guide because people kept getting stressed out and not sure if they qualified um, for the inserts, which it's like more of a conversation, like you said, Jessica, but this sometimes helps people um, figure that out. This, These are the guidelines for free weatherization through the state of Vermont, um, which I figured was pretty similar to getting window inserts. But once again, we will have a discussion if you're over these income limits. Um, we'd love to build inserts for you. And if you feel that you don't meet these, I am more than happy to direct you to Heartland Hartford's build. Um, they definitely will take folks from the Woodstock area and those towns as well. Um, this, I really wanted to emphasize what you said, Jessica, of the question, when you talk to people about weatherization, they often start talking about windows, which is really understandable because they're the things that we see every day and we look out of. Um, but you typically, as I wrote at the bottom, spend more on a window that's new than you're going to save on energy. It's just the reality. If anyone here has purchased a window lately, they're pretty expensive uh, for the benefit in weatherization that you get. These are two windows in my house. Um, the one on the left, the white one is new. Um, it replaced a window in a renovation of a section of the house. And that in that case, that window was single pane, rotting and cracked. So obviously there are some reasons you might go for a new window. Um, 
but the one on the right is a very old window. And in that case, I've got in an insulating shade um, at the top there. And there's a storm window on the outside you can't see, but I don't plan to replace that window um, for the reasons I just said. So that's what makes window dressers like such an exciting option because it's not a huge amount of money to drastically improve the quality of your windows. And just so you know, instead of focusing your money on windows, I would recommend focusing in the attic and the basement space. Um, that's where air is moving, it's leaving your attic, heat rises, and it's entering in the basement and making a stack effect. So if you're watching this going, well, if not the windows, then what would I do with my money? Um, <laughs> definitely these areas. Get an energy audit, check out where you're losing heat in your house. But for your windows, there are a lot of inexpensive options. Uh, window dressers is one of them, and it's a very useful one. Um, you could also look into insulating blinds or shades or the window shrink wrap kits, which are, mm, I, I would argue, less um, pleasant than window dressers because you have to install them specially every year and shrink them. And then often you can't reuse them. Maybe you can, whereas window dressers are just so easy to take out in and out. And then of course, storm windows, which I think would be a great an exterior storm window combined with a window dressers insert would be a really excellent way to weatherize your windows. Um, and of course, combined with window dressers, quick fixes, replacing cracked panes, caulking and weather stripping, um, filling holes. I love this roll of stuff. I buy the brand Mortite rope caulk that you can just break off pieces like a putty and fill holes in. So it's like a very comprehensive look at what you can do for windows. Um, but of course, in addition to all these things, we would love it if you signed up for window dressers. Um, we're full this year, obviously, because we're starting building um, next week. So we can't get you in this year. But we are going to be doing a build next year in Woodstock. I believe Heartland and Hartford is going to do another build next year. And Norwich and Hanover has an ongoing build. Um, and there is always an opportunity, like Jessica said, if you have a dedicated group of people to start a build in your community. Um, so that's it's another thing to consider. This is a picture in Stratford and Thetford last year of us putting plastic on a window, on an insert. So thank you so much, Jessica, for joining us. Thank you to some um, sponsors and partners of ours for making this year's build possible. Um, we really appreciate it. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and let's see. All right. So we, I mean, I am happy to, I'll just go ahead and allow you to unmute yourself and what you can do is you can either, you know, type, I mean, I, you can type your question in the chat or you can go ahead and raise your hand. And by raise your hand, I don't mean on the screen. I mean, down at the bottom, there's a little reactions button with a smiley face and you can click that and actually select the button that says raise hand. And that way I'll actually notice you because I don't know if I'll see you otherwise. So either or. Um, and we've got you on here too, right, Michael? Our director, Michael Kududa, yeah. as well. Hi, Michael. Hi. How are you? Good. Great Thanks. presentation, both of you. Yeah, thanks so much. Exciting that we're starting so soon to build the windows in Woodstock. I'm very excited. Um, and I see Cheryl has her hand up. Let's go. Oh, I see. Yeah. So we'll answer, I guess, the first one here, Christopher, thinking this session was aimed at DIY folks. So, I mean, it's not in the sense that window dressers is kind of DIY community wise, um, but right now it's button up season in Vermont. And so Efficiency Vermont is having a lot of webinars focused on weatherizing your home. So I would go to Efficiency Vermont and sign up for one of those. There are DIY rebates, um, which Jessica mentioned, can you be used to get $100 back on window dressers. Um, otherwise, there's other DIY info at Efficiency Vermont, and I'm happy to paste the link in there. Um, and then Cheryl. I don't know about Sharon, um, Jessica. Do you have any ideas? Uh, and I signed up on the window dresser site. I live in Sharon, Vermont, and don't know if I'm in a catchment area. Yeah, I'd have to look. I don't know where Sharon is exactly, so I would have to 
I would have to look at a map and see, but um, but I would say that um, I don't know if they can hear me. Um, yeah, we hear you now. In. Hi, Cheryl. Can you hear me? Hi. Um, I'm just 15 miles north of Hartford, bordering Pomfret, and what else do we border? Um, well, and yeah, South Royalton. South Royalton. So it's it's close to the upper valley. It's close to all the towns you mentioned. Right. And we have, so we have a build in Randolph. Okay. Um, is that at all? I, Cause I know they have some people from Royalton in their community build. Um, yep. Randolph is, and, is farther away than Hartford for me. Randolph's like half an hour. Hartford's about 15 minutes. Um, but it doesn't matter to me as long as, if I could fit into one area. So, um, yeah, I think, so the one in Heartland, uh, Hartford is almost full. Uh, they're, they're, they're basically getting close to the deadline by which all of their windows need to be measured and paid for um, because we need, we need about a week's lead time to get all the wood cut for the ins that make up each insert. Um, so I would have to, um, Steve, our program manager who's here, um, will be taking a look at those requests, your request that's come in and see if we can, if we can fit you in somewhere. Um, I know we've also talked about the possibility of doing another bill later in the season that might catch all of this additional interest. Um, in different regions. So it seems like there's a lot of interest in the Heartland, Hartford, Woodstock, Randolph, Norwich, Hanover areas. That So that's that's not set in stone yet, but it's a possibility. So we will be in touch, Cheryl. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Perfect. Oh, Ginevra, you're muted. That's classic. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> I'm seeing um, Joy put in the chat. We have looked at this the last year. My concern is a large enough leadership team. We have three plus two spouses. So you must be referencing um, starting a build, Joy. And you're welcome to meet. Well, yeah. I mean, when Joe and I went to a community build in Hartford last year, um, we brought it back and then there didn't seem to be the interest. I think people are very concerned about the time commitment. Um, and then another woman brought it to our energy committee in New London. I'm from New Hampshire and it's not, it's really just kind of starting like Hanover's 30 miles north. So um, other than New Hampshire, everything else is like close to Maine, so it's not near us. Um, and Keene is probably a good hour and 15 minutes southwest of us. So I think the main concern, and yeah, a woman did bring it to our energy committee in town. I'm not on the energy committee, but my husband and I went to that meeting because we were the only ones who had ever been at a community build. I think she's somewhat committed, but she's new and I don't really know her very well. Um, yeah, so I know that the time commitment for a leadership team is pretty hefty. And that's like making me drag my feet. I'm the secretary of our local Kearsage, it's the whole Kearsage area. But most of the energy committees, I think the people are, they don't wanna do big projects because they're busy with their energy committees. and. Most of our most active members are on energy committees in the area. Anyway, can you speak I, about the leadership team? Can I just jump in and ask where you live, what community you live in? New London, New Hampshire. New London, New Hampshire, all right. Yep, we're on 89. So I, my husband and I think probably due to travel concerns, we were thinking of going to the one up in Hanover, but that's done. Um, the Hartford one, we were th considering that, but then I just looked at Woodcrest. I mean, not Wood Woodstock. And I mean, we're somewhat familiar with Woodstock. It's under an hour drive. So, it's, and it fits our schedule well. 
So, and we've never put together the actual frames and it looks like that is a strong possibility next Friday evening. So anyway, we, we just want to learn more, but that is the concern is a strong enough group to start with. Steve, does that help? Yeah, very much so, because uh, I'm brand new for everyone. I mean, a month new. So uh, I guess there's two things that go along with that. I'm learning a whole lot about geography. I live in Maine, so um, I've yep. ridden my motorcycle through lots of Vermont. So I kind of know these areas as I drive through them. But now I'm, you know, getting to talk to people on the ground. And so, so the learning curve is steep, but it's great. I'm loving every minute of it. Uh, the other thing is I got a lot of energy as being the new guy. So um, I took every bit of notes I could here, Joy. And so, um, uh, you know, I'd love to have a conversation with you uh, further about, yeah, how could we kind of get something going around New London? I love that you're thinking about going up to one of the builds just to be part of it and to see it and to learn more. Um, and, and just in a quick sentence or two, this time of year, and Ginevra can probably attest to this, you are very, very busy. Um, there's a lot coming at you. There's a lot of details to manage. Um, but the outcome of that, I, to me, is just phenomenal. But what we window dressers, our model, is able to do uh, with volunteers is just absolutely incredible. So I think that feeds people's energy. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it will be busy, but you'll have a big smile on your face at the end of it. <laughs> Yeah, Steve, I was where just saying are that you? Uh, I live in Harrison, Maine. So close to the yeah, Bridgeton, Bridgeton, Maine area, not too far from North Conway, New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. So is this the first year you're already doing it or you're just learning about maybe doing it? Well, I'm I'm a staff member of window dressers. So my job is okay. program manager, program manager for all of Vermont and Keene, New, and New Hampshire. Hampshire. And very nice. Yeah, yeah, Western, Western New Hampshire, I'll say. We're lucky to have you, Steve. Yeah, very, very. So, uh, Joy, you know, Joy and I started a conversation maybe earlier a year this ago. year. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it would be great to have you pick that up, Steve, and see yep. if you can convince Joy to join our wonderful program. It is, yeah. So, I mean, Steve's right there. And I was talking about this with Ginevra just before the call started. Like, it is, it's a lot of work. I don't want to lie, but the end of this week, you know, the end of the build week, the build week is a lot of work, but you watch all of those inserts going out the door and start hearing all the feedback from customers. And it is incredibly satisfying, you know, for, for teams that, you know, groups, energy committees that want a concrete, project, you know, where they feel like they're making an impact, there's really not many other things like what we do around in that regard. So, and we provide all sorts of support and training to help get you across the finish line. And I sense there's a lot of support, Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> there is. And I also wanted to call out that Joellen had put here, we are in the Enfield New Hampshire and have contacted you ah. at a community build. And then she asked, please speak about the leadership team. Could you briefly just describe the roles in that? That might be helpful. Sure. And I'll put a document in the link after we finish going through this. Um, that's basically a, it's a, it's a document that just uh, for teams that, you know, for people that might be interested in, in leading a community build, it, it lays this all out. But so basically there are um, there are a handful of main roles that we suggest, and every team will do it a little bit differently, um, but essentially there's the local coordinator, and that person is really the point person between the rest of the leadership team and window dresser staff, and we do that really just to sort of streamline communications as much as, much as possible, but again, every team sort of works out differently. It depends on how involved other members are and maybe what they're doing. So um, another job is measuring coordinator. So we recommend that each team has two to three measuring teams. So that's four to six measurers. And those are the people that go out 
um, to every customer's home and measure the windows. So that's those are another those are big jobs as well and time consuming. But if you have enough teams, enough measures, you can really spread that work out so that it's not falling on any falling too heavily on anybody's shoulders. Um, we recommend an outreach coordinator, so somebody who's going to be spreading the word in the local community um, in different ways through, you know, writing short articles for local papers, uh, doing social media posts and uh, blasts, email blasts, uh, speaking at local events to try to recruit customers. Um, and again, we provide training and support on, you know, and lots of suggestions about how to do that. But if you have somebody sort of coordinating that and having a checklist of sort of the things that you're doing, it can be very helpful. Um, so the, then there's the volunteer coordinator. So that's somebody whose work is really, it, it tends to be more, um, the bulk of the work is taking place right before the community build when you're making sure that each shift of your community build is filled with enough volunteers. So generally we recommend about 10 to 12 volunteers for each four hour shift of the day. And we generally say two four hour shifts um, for each day of the build. Um, so that person will be getting in touch with everybody who's getting inserts and making sure they're signed up for shifts and then going out into the community and recruiting different groups of people or individuals who can supplement your volunteer, um, your volunteer um, uh, to fill the volunteer slots for your build. And then we also recommend that there's somebody to coordinate the food. So an important aspect of the builds um, is that between the morning and the afternoon shift that we like to bring everybody to, together around a table to share a meal and just relax chat and again a chance to really get to know people who you might otherwise not have an opportunity to get to know. Um, so and that food is usually donated by local businesses, other volunteers in the community, sometimes participants so people are getting inserts. If they're unable to volunteer for some reason, they can donate food. So it's really helpful to have somebody coordinate all that and put all the pieces together to make sure you have enough food each day to keep your volunteers happy. <laughs> um, and so, and again, the measurers, I mentioned those, they're a very important part of the team as well. So that's a general overview and I'll put a, I'll put a link to the document in the chat. Thank you. And I can send out that document in the follow-up email that goes out to everyone who registered. Great. And I might just add, Jessica, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, numbers wise, you know, in order to start a build, I think we'd love to have 200 inserts. So whatever that works out to be, you know, 25 to 30 families at an average of seven or eight inserts, if my math is correct. But we'd love to see at least 200, um, you know, to get to get going. And then experience builds do about 250. Some are even above that and are getting close to 300. But they've done it for a few years and they've got it down and they've got their volunteers coming back year to year. And so it's building that infrastructure that, you know, you can count on year in, year out and having enough uh, critical mass to make it work. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Steve. Um, I want—I know we missed your question, Hope, and I don't know the answer. Um, any incentive support from New Hampshire Saves? I'm guessing any incentives in New Hampshire available kind of is the idea. Is, is New Hampshire Saves similar to Efficiency Vermont? It is their Efficiency Vermont. I see. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah. I, I just, don't know about that. I haven't heard There's reimbursement through New Hampshire Saves for weatherization. Do you know what it is? But it's not, I don't know. It's about 50%. With a cap on the mouth. With a cap it's on the mouth. usually the contracting, insulating, and I don't, I just, I didn't know if you guys just knew off, you know, off the top of your head, whether you'd heard of, whether these things are eligible or not. Well, I talked so. to the Lebanon group. I was at the Lebanon Hanover build and, mm -hmm. um, or sorry, the um, Norwich Hanover. Whew. 
Um, and I talked to the Hanover folks and they said no. Um, but yeah. of course there could be something that I'm unaware of and they're unaware of. So I would say, I would recommend that um, if, you know, as the number of teams community builds grows in New Hampshire, um, if somebody has the capacity to make a request of uh, New Hampshire saves that they include window dressers inserts in their in their DIY or weatherization rebate or whatever the program is, um, that they do it as soon as possible because um, in Maine, Efficiency Maine just recently announced a DIY rebate program similar to Efficiency Vermont, but our inserts are not included. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, so they include the, you know, the plastic that you can, the shrink wrap plastic for your windows, but but not the insert. So, so we're going to get on there for next year. Um, but it was a little bit of a disappointment. So I would say, if you could get ahead of the game and say this is a really effective weatherization um, uh, thing that you can do, a DIY essentially, because you're going to participate, give your time to help make the inserts. Um, if there's anybody who can advocate for that, then I um, I encourage you to do so. One thing I wanted to mention is just the experience of going to a assembly um, for window dressers for the first time. I had heard a lot about it and been working on on it with Ginevra, but it wasn't until I went to one of the sessions that I really got a sense of the whole community um, building aspect of it and people working together and having a great time. And um, that that really is, I think, as you said, Jessica. A unique part of the program, the whole project. It was just a really, really fun experience, and people were laughing and having a great time, mm -hmm. and you know, having a good, a nice lunch helps. Up as you also mentioned, lots of good food. So, just wanted to mention that that it really is a great community building event, as you said. And that's such a good point because you can't. I argue you can't understand window dressers till you go to a build. Um, yeah. sure. I not fully understand it. So <laughs> um, we missed a question from Joseph. I also wanted to call out, is there a YouTube video on the actual building? I assume of the inserts. Um, so basically like a, how we, like a, to show you how we do it. Um, yeah, I, think so. I don't think there, we don't have, we don't have a, a video, um, we don't have something like that. We do have, we do have videos that we we share with our volunteers, but those are um, those are sort of training videos. So we don't have a like a video that shows the whole, I don't know, the whole build setup. If that what you're, if that's what you're asking. It's just not yet. Yeah. Not, are you not here, yet. Joseph? Yeah, the whole build setup. Yeah, we don't have we don't have that, and it's um you know it's interesting. It's one of those things. Having led community builds before, I always say like, oh, I'm going to take a lot more pictures or do some video, um, and it's yeah, I just never had the time. It's you're too busy running around helping and getting things done. So, um, and you know we have limited staff to go out and do that. But um, actually, I would say there are some. So I don't know if anybody's familiar with GNAT. It's a I think a, a like a public access or community access TV um, network and it may just be in Bennington County, but they um, did some videos to support um, the, the window dressers uh, builds that were going on there. So I think if you go on their website, you probably be able to see their, their videos. We weren't able to get permission to post those videos on our, on our YouTube channel, but, um, but I'm sure you can find them on their website. Thanks, Jessica. Okay. Am I missing any questions? Have any of you seen any? And I was I would say I just see that you saw that you put the link 
for the Woodstock build um, there, you know, I'm assuming that's for volunteering. Um, if you do have time to volunteer, I would maybe look at the builds that are near you and see where maybe, you know, go to each one will have a link for the signup.com page and see where maybe they need some help. Um, some days that are lighter than others on volunteers. Uh, to help them get, get their work across the finish line, they'd be very grateful, I'm sure. And if you're interested in getting inserts for yourself next year, you can always go to our website and sign up um, under the Request Inserts tab, and we will put you on the list for next year. I just put the link to all of the workshops. So if you click that, you can check those out. Some are, I mean, Hanover's is done, but you could do Heartland, um, Hartford's or ours and depending where you live, others. So I'll include that when I send the email out too. Okay. Any other questions? I think we've, I think we've gotten them all, right? I think so. Looks like it. Excellent. Well, thank, you. Well, thank you, Steve and Jessica and, and Ginevra for all of the amazing amount of time that you've put into this to the project and just, well thank you to you and Geneva for supporting such an amazing project in Woodstock um I think it's you know it's really unusual that we get a build that focuses only on um you know folks who are struggling financially uh, so that's that's really it's really impressive and um and it's great it's a great thing you're doing thank you and for all the time you put in to make it happen. <laughs> That's Ginevra. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it is time, but I know Steve and Jessica spend even more time on it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you coming on and I'm looking forward to starting next week. Yay. Yay. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.